Well, guys, I think Diablo 4 might be saved. It might be saved. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the brand new video that we're going to be talking about. The dev stream just ended the campfire chat. We are going to be going over everything as quickly and as promptly as possible. But I believe the game has been saved. My faith has been shaked multiple times and season four is going to be insane. Now, I do want to start off this video just talking about a couple of things that are not in the video. So that way, if you guys ask me down in the comments, uh, you already have your answer. One, we get no information about the season four theme. Two, there is also nothing about the armory. We are not getting the armory. And three, and most important, which a lot of people are going to ask, we do not get a loot filter for reasons that I'll describe later in the video. So let's go ahead and jump right into this thing because we, boy, do we got a lot to talk about. So my personal opinion about all this while we're getting started is that everything that's in here, there's a few minor L's that I don't like. And they're just kind of like tidbits. But overall, this is a huge dub for the Diablo 4 devs in the game. I think this is a huge turnaround. I think a lot of players, including myself, felt that the season four is going to be a huge turning point, whether the game just continues to decline or if it's going to be on the uprise leading into their um, expansion that they're going to be bringing in in a few months. So let's get into it. First of all, PTR. Everybody knows about the PTR. The PTR is going to be here. It is... Uh, April 2nd to the 9th, okay? So it's gonna be for one week only. We're gonna be able to go in and test absolutely everything that we're gonna be talking about in this video. Also, with that, season three has been extended, okay? Season three has been extended, all right? It's extended till the middle of May, okay? It's extended so that way we as the players can do the PTR and we can go in and offer our feedback so that way they can make changes and implement things uh, accordingly. Now. With the PTR, it is, again, going to be only for PC players on Battle.net. So if you do not play on Battle.net in the PC, you will not be able to do the PTR. Sorry, console. You need to throw that thing in the trash and to get a PC like a real gamer. Second, in the PTR, you will be able to get ways to get boosted up to get uh, instantly to level 100. You'll get 100 million gold oobles, and then you'll be able to get all these mounts, skill points, etc. for your characters and you will be able to go through and just absolutely test everything so i think this is great this is similar to how they did things in diablo 3 which is just fantastic okay so uh they explain a lot of things here the overview of itemization so they talk about base item updates additionals codexes tampering greater affixes master working we got an entire revamp of how itemization works the items in the game and I am so I'm more excited about this than anything because games like Last Epoch and Path of Exile, the crafting system is by far one of my favorite things to do. So we get that finally in Diablo. So they change a bunch of stuff here. Um, example of item changes, which we've talked about in the past. If you get an item that has like plus to lightning bolt, plus to flame shield, plus to frozen Nova, you don't get those items anymore, right? All that stuff has changed. Only sacred items will drop in world tier three and only ancestral items will drop in world tier four. This is something that I've been calling for for two seasons now. I don't understand why for the longest time I'm still getting sacred items inside of uh, see world tier four at level 100. It's absolutely ridiculous. So uh, let's move on with that. So to get into the base item changes, the way they explain it, it's very simple. So what they're doing is they're reducing the amount of affixes, not only in general that we're gonna have in the game, but the amount that are gonna be on your items. So for legendary items, your normal legendaries, you're gonna go from four to three, which is shown here, right? Four and then three. And then on rare items, your yellow items, you're gonna go from four to two. Now, don't freak out yet. We're gonna be able to do a lot of crafting to increase those later. So. Um, in addition to the reduction here of uh, the affixes, not only on there, but the overall, it's to make it a little bit more clearer when you're going through items and sniffing around, when you're like going through dungeons and stuff, trying to get items, right? This is much more clean to read is the way that they explain it. And it's easier just to go through and just be like, okay, I don't need that trash. Okay. Don't need it. Don't want it. Get it out of here. Okay. Now, uh, on top of that, we're going to go through to the next part. Um, the quantity over quality is what they're kind of talking about and having a journey. Now, when we talk about this, this is going to be the thing. Uh, so before, same thing, go through and we talk about those changes, all right? So in here, we're going to go through and just kind of talk about the additional updates. Legendary items drop from level 95 plus monsters are always 925 item. This is great. 
Uh, they talk about the gems being simpler, better, and have much longer crafting uh, tail. They didn't really go into too much of a description of this. I'm just going to assume that we're going to have more ranks to level these things up. And we're also going to be uh, uh, applying a change to them. So, for example, like the emerald is, you deal additional crit strike damage to enemies that are vulnerable. Instead of it having a condition like they have to be vulnerable, you will be able to just have it be just critical strike damage. That's how they're changing those things, okay? So, uh, significantly reduced item drop rates, less time sorting, more time slaying. Item re-rolling is capped. They did not tell us what the cap is, all right? But it is capped. I'm going to guess it's somewhere around 10 million. DT, you're probably going to love that. Material removal and consolidation. This means that... All the different like berries and stuff that you get, it's all gonna be consolidated under one um, material, which are gonna be used to upgrade your uh, potions as you level, as well as craft your elixirs. Now, Forgotten Souls are gonna be applied into elite drops as well as whispers, which is great. We don't know what the numbers are, but uh, they will be dropped more because Forgotten Souls are one of the most sought after materials. Now, on top of a lot of these changes, to the items okay to the items i do want to add something in here before we get into the next part and i want i want to say it very clear for those that are watching legendary items can be traded i repeat legendary items can be traded okay all of the legendary items can be traded now uniques and uber uniques cannot be traded but your legendary items can be traded. Now, just like how the trading system is now, when you get a base item like this in season four, where you have not done any crafting or re-rolling, that's how you're gonna be able to trade it. If you do any modifications to the item, you will no longer be able to trade it. That's it, okay? Trading, finally, this is gonna hopefully help the market um, for Diablo 4 much better instead of the, the horrible market we have now where you're spending 10 billion gold for one egg to go fight Duriel. Uh, now the market should be much better and hopefully just kind of level out a little bit with all of these items. Okay. So legendaries can be traded. Now the next huge dub that we have on here is the, uh, uh, where is this? This is the, uh, salvaging thing. Okay. So this is probably the next biggest thing at the blacksmith, okay? And this is where our Codex of Power is finally going to be leveled up. Shout out to Rax for the idea that he mentioned many, many moons ago, all right? Your inventory space in your stash and on your character is going to be absolutely free for whatever you want. Now, when you salvage an item in here, you're gonna be able to increase and level up your Codex of Power, all right? We finally get that, it goes into here. So as an example, every single legendary power, not just the normal ones that they have, every single legendary power in the game is going to be in your codex and you're going to be able to level this up. An example here is that it's gonna start at the bare minimum. So with edge masters, you're gonna start at 5%. All right, you're gonna start at 5% and it can go up to 20, all right? So this is a 6%. The example is shown is that if you find an edge master that is a 10% and then you salvage it, this edge masters will change to 10%. And then every time you, um, you know, imprint it onto a, an item, it'll always be 10%. And you can do this with edge masters until you get it perfect. And then it's perfect always. Huge, huge dub here. Also, there is a complete search filter here. So you can search through all of the legendary powers. It's absolutely fantastic, okay? So big dub there on the Codex of Power. Crazy, we really, really needed this. Now, our crafting system is finally here. I was shocked when I heard this watching because I didn't expect any kind of serious crafting changes to come this season, but it makes sense with the itemization. So we have a new thing called tampering. Tampering is gonna be just like in Last Epoch where you have your forging, right? Where you can forge things, okay? So the crafting system allows you to add cool new affixes and get tampering manuals, all right? So it drops from most content, you can't target farm it, and tampering attaches an affix from the manual and you can re-roll them. So I got a lot of questions while this was being explained, so I'm gonna do my best to help everybody out. So we have brand new manuals which are gonna be added to the game, okay? 
These manuals apply to all the different categories, weapon, mobility, defense, resource, etc. All right, each of these is going to be, have four affixes on it, as you can see here. All right, so what happens is, is that you get an item like this choker of ancestral charge. Again, everybody who was worried about just having three affixes, no, you can end up having five. So what happens is, is that you have your item, you're gonna put it into the blacksmith under the tampering. You're gonna have two tampering affixes and tampering durability. People got confused with this. So under the amulet, you can add two tampering affixes to the amulet, which is what you see here from charge cooldown reduction, as well as damage while berserking, okay? So ancestral items can only add two, regulars can only add one, all right? Now, the way that tampering durability remaining works is similar to forging, okay, like in Last Epoch. So essentially what happens with tampering durability is the durability or the number of times that you can re-roll these additional affixes that you added. So how it works is when you, when you add your first two, those are free. When you add two, those are free. The, the durability means that each time you go to re-roll past that, it's going to uh, consume one of your tampered durabilities until you run out. So it's just essentially you have seven opportunities to get the exact affixes that you want. However, if we can skip forward here a little bit to the example, what you're going to see is that while he's doing this on here and he's adding the marksman, the offensive skill, one of the four affixes is going to be added randomly. So you can only get one. Okay, so out of the four for Marksman, he got Marksman Damage. Okay, now if you didn't want Marksman Damage, you're gonna have to go back into Marksman and then re-roll it again, all right? So you would re-roll it again and I want something else. I want Marksman Crit, for example, right? So you're gonna have seven opportunities to get the two additional, excuse me, two additional affixes on your weapon that you want, okay? So this is huge. This is amazing, tampering, fantastic for forging. You're really gonna be able to customize your items the way you want, but don't, hey, hold on, it gets better, okay? It gets better. So in addition to tampering, which I think is just absolutely fantastic, okay? There is gonna be greater affixes and a 1.5 multiplier on affixes that are rolled, okay? It's gonna make drops a little bit more exciting. As an example, to me, this is literally Primal Ancients from Diablo 3. As you can see here that these little highlighted images and see how it has, we're gonna get a zoom in in a second. These are 150% multiplier on the damage itself. The item, as you can see here, looks a little different, right? It's got a little more shine, but we have the Roman numerals here, meaning that this item that dropped has two perfect stats. Now, out of your three stats that, that are dropped on an item, it's gonna be two at random, but you will know that this is essentially like a Primal Ancient where the two stats are 100% perfect, as you can see right here. These are 150% perfect. So the randomization, it could have been Chris Strike Damage plus Lucky Hit, but it is completely random, which is fantastic. As you can see here, right? It can be completely random to whatever it is which I think is great. Now, let's talk about master working because this is this is great. So our old crafting system where you would upgrade something five times is being replaced. It's being replaced by master working. So now you're gonna be able to upgrade an item 12 times, okay? So just so there's no confusion, we're gonna look at these. So you can upgrade an item 12 times, which is fantastic. On every fourth upgrade, one of your stats is gonna get a huge increase, but the other two or other stats are gonna all stay the same. So as an example, you can see that at level two, here's your stats. At level three, your stats went up just a little bit, right? And then at level four, you can see that maximum life got a huge boost and then all of the other stats stayed the same. So this can happen at rank four, rank eight, and then your last rank at rank 12. The catch to this is, is that at each of those major upgrades, 
it can be the same stat that gets upgraded. Again, this is all at random. This also includes not only your normal three stats, but it also includes the other ones that you put on with the brand new crafting system. I know that this is a display. They already said that this was, you know, was a bug. It, it, these are supposed to be upgraded as you go. So even the additional ones that you add will also be upgraded, okay? Now, an awesome part to this is that this system of upgrading something 12 times, if you don't like the big bonuses that are added to particular stats and you want to say, you want to get that crit chance really high, you can restart this entire 12 system upgrade of masterworking. However, you just lose the resources that you put into it while you were leveling. You can restart it as many times as you need to to try to get the perfect weapon. You're just going to be spending whatever the resource cost is. We don't know how much that is at this time. But I love the fact that like, if I want to get as much vulnerable damage as possible, I want to try to hit and upgrade that at rank 4, 8, and 12. You can do that. I think it's fantastic. Okay. So... Let's keep going. This is a before item, and this is a final item after all of the crafting, after finding a primal ancient item, etc. Okay? So you can see how a base item would drop, and then all of the different changes that you can make to it. You can add your different powers on here, like chance for bone splinters, projectiles to cast twice, which is crazy. Bone spear damage is increased. These have been increased by 150% because they're primal ancient. And with the master working, you can make these even higher. But wait, itemization gets even better. There's one more thing to add to this, which I think is absolutely fantastic. The way that they explain this is um, the progression of leveling up your items as you continue to level. So an example of this, if I can find it here, if we can find it, flat damage increases. So. As you find a weapon, as an example, with the lightning, let me, will it zoom up? Do they do a zoom up? Yes. So this is really important as you're leveling up. I know we're, the video is getting long, but I wanted to go over everything as much as I can. So normally when you get a power, you have a range, as you can see here, from 48 to 55, right? And in the current state, that just stays the same. However, this is the same exact item in the new season four. And you can see that the item is actually stronger. How did that happen? The power number will increase based on when you swap out your weapons. When you swap out your weaker weapon to a stronger weapon, this power number will increase, which is fantastic. The, the way as it was explained is that when you find an item like this or a power and you're using it for your build, as you continue to level up or your journey of leveling up, the more or the stronger that you get with the weapons and things that you increase, the stronger that this power can become, which is fantastic. Huge dub there. Okay. So now we got master working done. Let's go into a few other changes. They have a lot of season class balancing changes. We're going to talk about the majority of those when the patch notes officially get released. Okay. But they did show some brand new um, uniques which is like Tyrael's Might, it's finally back, and you got guys get to see it here. When you're at full life, you get the barrage that just gets fired off. So Tyrael's Might is back. It's absolutely awesome there. Okay, so meaningful class updates. So they're changing a lot of stuff here. Necromancers are getting a huge buff. The minions will inherit 100% of the player's stats, which is crazy. Frozen Orb is getting a lot of love, and Mastery uh, skills are core skills and vice versa for Sorcerers. This is great. Um, class updates for Barbarian, they changed some things. This is a really good example here. The old one was casting double swing twice within two seconds create. So instead of going one, two, um, Dust Devil, now they change this to every time you cast swing, you get a Dust Devil, and then casting it twice in two seconds gives you three. So basically, if you go one, one, Devil, now it's one, one, de three Devils. You know what I mean? So it makes it a lot stronger. Druid's got some buffs here with Prime. Last rate, much stronger. Um, the Winterless Glass or the Winter Glass Amulet 
for the Sork is giving Frozen Orb a huge boost where every time you cast Frozen Orb, you have a chance to spawn a random Conjuration, which also has a chance to spawn a Frozen Orb, which is actually kind of cool. So Frozen Orb itself can just cast Conjurations, which in turn can cast more Frozen Orbs. Inner Sight is getting a complete rework. We'll talk about that more later. Um, Necromancer minions are getting a change. Reaper is going to reduce cooldowns. Cold mages are applying vulnerable damage as opposed to applying vulnerable to just frozen enemies. And then Iron Golem Slam will pull everybody in. It's absolutely fantastic. Big changes here. Uh, the flat damage effects, which I just talked about. The before and after to a lot of these ancestrals is great. So they changed and we're, we're, are removing a lot of conditional effects. So before it was your core skills, now core skills is no longer there. Also barbarian only, now any class that can use this sword can absolutely use this. So it's making items remove conditional effects, which makes them weaker in some cases and allowing more classes to use these items. All right, we got the stealth grenade, same thing here. They changed some stuff. Um, hardcore, they're, they are removing the elixir of death evasion from the game. So for hardcore players, have fun dying. And then we get into some Helltide updates, which is the last thing in today's video. I'm just kidding. There's a lot more endgame stuff. So Helltide updates. There's a higher density. There's a threat meter that gets built up. And there's a lot of ambushes and new content. So as an example, when they're going through, you can see here on the Helltide, this is Bloodshed. Shout out to Bloodshed. The brand new things are you have this meter here. As it fills up, it fills up from doing absolutely everything. Killing monsters, opening chests, doing events inside the Helltide, and the monster density is much higher, which is amazing. This can also start at World Tiers 1 and 2. World Tier 1 and 2 can use these. Now, when your meter fills up, okay, when your meter fills up, you're gonna hear a sound, and then monsters are going to spawn. So when this fills up, you're gonna hear a big sound, Kaching, and then all of the monsters will be just spawning on you as you can see in the video and this happens as the bar is draining and it will continue to happen until your bar is at zero and then you'll start the cycle all over again in addition there is additional bosses which i think are really really cool that can spawn let me see if we can find it where is it there's another boss that spawns which is great and right here the new brand new uh Hellborns that can spawn here. This is the brand new, one of the brand new bosses to the Helltides, which are really, really strong and drop high level loot. So Helltides got a massive, massive buff. The next thing, boss ladder updates. And again, I want to listen to this for the video just so people can see it, but Andy is back. And Dariel is back, and then summoning parts can be dropped from virtually everything. Base to kind of gain okay. access to these really, really powerful, unique now, Dariel drops. I want to say that the way it, you can go back and listen to the video, but the way it was said was, is that with Andy Pops, being here now, which is that shot at getting those uber uniques, yeah. without always requiring players to go back to those same places. Content, so, all tied content. On Dariel or Andy, will have the same boss drop loot table as Dariel meaning that it can drop all the same uber uniques from Andariel to get the parts you have to farm Beast in the Ice and Lord Zerg. So Lord. now you'll be able to see what Andy looks like. Let me skip ahead. Andy is here. Super awesome that she's back and you're going to be able to fight her. I'm very much looking forward to this boss fight. Um, in addition, uh, in addition, greater rifts are back in the end game. Okay, greater rifts are back. Okay, greater rifts are here under the artificer obelisk. Now, in order to access the greater rifts, or they're calling them pits, you have to complete a level 34 nightmare dungeon, which will drop items to unlock the pit. Then once the pit is unlocked, you're going to be able to go in here and do the pit. It literally works the same exact way as a greater rift from Diablo 3. So this is kind of what the AOZ is going to be. Starting at level one, the monsters will start at level 100, and you're gonna be able to climb, 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 climb. The higher that you climb, the better rewards that you get. And what do I mean by that? So not only are you gonna be getting, you know, perfect 925 item power gear, the amount of items that drop will increase the deeper you go into the pit. 
This is the same thing that happened in Diablo 3 with greater rifts. That's why GR90 is like the pinnacle, because at GR90, you were capped at, what was it, 15 items, I believe. So 15 legendaries will drop. So at, we don't know what the cap is or if there's one in the pit, but the deeper that you go, the more legendary items will drop at the end. As you can see here, we're gonna go into the pit. We go all, let's get down to the end here. You can see that there's the boss. He's gonna kill the boss, which is really, really cool. Uh, if I can skip ahead just a little bit more. And you can see that there's one, two, three, four, five items at level one. And then you're gonna be able to get a chest, which is gonna drop some more items. But the stagnant stone, we have one more thing to talk about, which I think everybody is gonna love. I probably should put it at the beginning of the video. So once you open the mystery chest here, the mystery chest, if he'll pop it really quick, I don't wanna to skip too far ahead. Uh, yep, the mystery, okay. So it's gonna drop these items, which we're gonna see right here in the um, materials tab. So these items that you can see right here, these items, uh, I'm not even gonna pronounce this, but these three items here are the items that you're going to get as you progress deeper into the pit. Now, well, what are you gonna do with these items, okay? So these items are gonna be used to um, change and modify or use the Masty Masterwork Station at the Blacksmith, which customizes your uh, items right so the deeper that you go the higher level of these that you get there's only three so the higher level that you go the more that you get to be able to, to customize but the stag the stagnant stone i said that wrong this stone is probably one of the biggest reasons that you're doing the pit the pit is designed to drop these stones this is the reason that you're going to do them because this stone is going to allow you to go fight level 200 uber variants of our bosses okay so andy duriel um varshan right all of these bosses are going to be able to be fought at level 200 they are a torment version why is that important and why is that cool so you get those stones from defeating the bosses in the pit then you can go fight each of these bosses. The very first time, unless they change it, the very first time you defeat these tormented versions of the bosses, it's gonna drop you one spark. You're gonna get one spark. So once you defeat all five, you're gonna be able to go craft any uber unique that you want. This only applies to the very first time that you fight the boss. So you'll be finally be able to craft anything that you want. The only thing that we don't know, which I'm assuming is not the case, is that when you make a brand new character an alt character, because that character has not defeated that said boss at the Uber variant, you'll be able to get a spark again. So even on adult or alternate characters, you should be able to end up crafting any and all Uber uniques that you're going to want. So this is absolutely fantastic, okay? So there hasn't been anything with Uber Lilith, but you're gonna be able to do this all in the end game. I mean, this is just an absolute dub. So the stagnant stones start dropping within the pit. These stones are used to summon level 200 versions of each boss on the ladder. And then we're making it easier, easier to acquire boss ladder materials, which means that every time you turn into Whisper, anytime you complete it, kill a boss, anytime you kill an elite, there's a chance for any ladder boss material to drop in the game which is just so much better uh now again the stones are used to fight the level 200 versions of each boss on the ladder which means that it's duriel grigor varshan zur and uh beast in the ice so those are the five bosses to where you get the the uber versions and you'll be able to get those stones to make whatever uber unique that you want then they get into some q a and that is about it guys so all in all, I am very, very excited. All of this was an absolute dub in my opinion. Oh, a couple more things really fast. The camera zoom at, that you saw in the gameplay here, it is a little bit zoomed back, isn't it? That is going to be an option in Season 4. And again, all of this is for not only Season 4, the PTR, but as well as the Eternal Realm for all you non-season players, which still don't make any sense to me. But... 
you can finally zoom the camera back. And also, additionally, if you wanna be up close like we have been, you have that option as well. But for me personally, I'm gonna be zooming that thing out. It's gonna be an absolute blast. But that's gonna do it for today's video, guys. I didn't want it to last too long. I wanted to go over everything as much as I can. I hope this has helped you and answered any questions. But if you do have some, make sure to comment down below. Let me know what your thoughts are. I'll link the video down below. Make sure to let me know everything that you think. If this was a dub, an L, please let me know, guys. Uh, don't forget to like the video, subscribe, and as always, stay gaming. And I'll see you guys in season four. Let's go. Later.